One of my fuck it moments would have been pretty early on in my time in the UK. I put out a record that was signed by Universal. It really opened up a lot of doors for me, got the record out. Um, it was back in the day when compilations were still huge and they licensed everything everywhere. So it was great. And then it came time for the next record. So when it came to the next record, they wanted, firstly they were saying, who's going to produce this record? And my whole thing was, especially then, was like, I'm proving myself as a producer. And you're going to ask me who's going to produce my record? The second aspect was the offer. <laughs> you know, the offer was not good enough. <laughs> and that was, maybe that was actually a precursor to the industry changing, because they could see what was coming. It was a really interesting moment for me, because it's a choice. It's like, wait, so I'm with a major label, I've got full access, they're supporting what I want to do, but to go forward with them, I've got to play their game. I've got to get a producer in, I'm not going to want to work with, I've got to make a record for less money than I can make it for, fuck it. <laughs> so that was a moment when I was just kind of walked. And I didn't know what was going to happen. It was a really, it was a, it was a strange time. For me, at that time, I, I went to my publisher and I explained the whole thing. I was like, man, I need you to re-up my advance so I can make this next record. There's, there's no label. And the publisher was, you know, supportive enough to do that. So he gave me a chunk of change and I got to make the record. I still didn't know who it was going to come out with. And it eventually got signed to ABB in the Bay Area. And that was interesting too, because in a way that couldn't be more opposite to Universal. You know, Benny B running that label, it was super, you know, home style. It was right around the time Little Brother was there. He, was, he did a Sarah 12 and a few other things. It was interesting because that released on that little label relative to Universal, it really did so much more for me in the States than Universal had ever done. They were strong in Europe, but it was that was that was cool. And that really helped me to start touring here. And you know, my first shows in LA were just because of that record. And then it built up that whole that whole vibe. The biggest challenge for me as a creator has been that I don't I don't conform very well. And I feel like if I conformed better, I would have had more tangible success. For example, if I had committed 100% the whole way, I'm playing jazz music, nothing else, and put all that energy into that, would have gone clear. If it had been house, if it had been any one thing, but I don't hear music like that. You know, I, I hear it in between the cracks of these genres. And I don't see, I don't understand why anyone, anyone else wouldn't hear it like that. So I think that's been my challenge. And then subsequently, people who get into my music, they might get into one record, and this other cat might get into a different record. And then they'll see me as two, as different people. Whereas I'm just saying, this is all music. It's like, you know, it's like food. Do you want to eat hamburgers every day or you want to mix it up? So that's been a challenge somewhat, um, but not, nothing that I would ever choose to change. So, you know, playing an arena, that's the, I've never done arena tours, you know, to see him coming, I, I'm still thinking that's a, some sound guy or whatever, and he's going, dah, 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 and I go, huh? And he just stole on me, pop and clock me like right around here, he, like he's, he got me good. Nas is like, yo, it's a pleasure to meet you, and Kanye is like, yo, actually, like there was a track that I think that maybe Nas had gotten from No ID or something that actually Kanye had done. So he's like, actually, I'm on this album of yours. I did this track actually as a, as a ghost producer. I'm shook. They didn't find anything. Talking to Chuck, I was like, Chuck, man, did you hear there's a bomb threat in the hotel? He's like, oh, that's nothing, Lord. Remember Flavor in 87, there was a bomb on the stage. Flavor's like, yeah, boy, there's a bomb on it. That was crazy, G. And when he shook my hand, I, I, I just wasn't the same since, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I think, he passed along something in that shake 